Welcome. Hi. <clears throat> the mind. It's a great subject, the mind. But let's not look at it as a subject because it's it's separate. It becomes separate when you look at it as outside of you. The mind. <clears throat> Everything is mind. There's only mind here. Consciousness and mind, same thing. Consciousness is existence and mind is enclosed within this existence, as is every form and everything. So mind is basically all there is. Mind is speaking right now. <coughs> Human beings have created different forms of consciousness, different levels of consciousness through their own personal experiences personal insights, revelations, whatever. And we've also created different levels of mind and different levels of time and time and different levels of society and different levels of depths and whatever. <clears throat> so who is creating all these different levels? Because consciousness and mind are the only real things that hear. But suddenly there are different levels of consciousness and mind. Only through a single individual person's experience of mind and consciousness um, can they say, explain what their experience revealed. Or held. <clears throat> so we have now multiple books on multiple levels of multiple minds and multiple consciousness. Buddha speaks store consciousness, Bhagavad Gita speaks transcendental, transcendental cosmic God consciousness. But the mind, <clears throat> if we look at it as a complete entity, a complete thing. So if it's got different levels, it's dissected up into different le uh, floor levels, uh, matrix levels, whatever. <clears throat> now if it was dissected up into different levels, then there would be a jump between levels. There would be an instinctive knowing that you've changed from this level to this level. But if there are no walls up or barriers or boundaries, the mind collapses. And if, in, in fact, if we go back before human beings had experiences and insights and revelations and looked at what mind and consciousness was before we examined it through our own personal <coughs> actions, then it really has no order because there are no levels until these levels are put in place by us, by mind. So consciousness and mind are putting levels within inside them to explain to themselves you know what we are not the same we are the same substance we're identical but there are different movements and that is all i'm saying today there are not different levels there are different movements every single experience that has been has taken place by every single human being with enlightening um, <clears throat> understandings is plausible, is acceptable, is correct, is 100% correct. But when we say there's a stepping stone to get from A to Z, from human consciousness to God consciousness, it's going to take me forever. We now create different levels of time. Different varieties of different 
people enlightened at different ages, different stages, different centuries, whatever. And we, through our wow factor, give them some stage to, to speak. But this is only their turn. So Jesus and Buddha had experiences that were wow. But there are many more, many others that pre previous to and later on, still experiencing levels of mind and levels of consciousness. So there's no special one. There's no special Jesus. You are the next Jesus. You are the next Buddha. When your sudden experience of enlightenment through whatever depression or seeking or whatever takes place, there will be a feeling of, my God, this is how Jesus felt. I am the next Jesus. But if you are true and honest to yourself and let everything take its course, it will soon be revealed that you are just experiencing this because it is your time to experience it. And it will go. It'll pass. <clears throat> Maybe for the ones who've experienced it, there is another stage, a next stage, a new dimension, a new planet, a new body, a new whatever. Because there's no ending. So where can you go? And again, this will be revealed to you when this experience takes place. But it's not you that is experiencing anything taking place. It is mind and consciousness. Your body and everything that surrounds you in your external world is made up of mind and consciousness. The whole same substance that cannot be findable that science cannot discover through whatever research, magnifying glasses, whatever they use, telescopes, you'll never find this consciousness and mind. It is inexplainable, unseeable. So consciousness and mind in its wholeness at different movements within this whole moving entity bubble, which is the whole universe moving is it is revealing small changes constantly and not in any chronological order this one first this one second this one third which star is the most special star in the universe well, yeah that one's really yeah but you know you know they're all the same stars planets are all the same planets whether we can breathe on them or live on them is completely irrelevant. They're the same thing. There's no special planet. We obviously think Earth is the most special planet because we really depend on it. Because without this consciousness, with this Earth, consciousness or mind could not experience what it is experiencing now. You are just a vessel inside your own self. No duality, no non-duality, no beyond non-duality, no nothing, no something, no this, no that, just you or I. And you are, well, in this vessel, you will experience being a human being, experience being consciousness, be experience mind. But when the, the body goes, the mind will go, the consciousness will go. But you will still be there to select another vessel or whatever. So what's the purpose? What is the purpose of it all? <coughs> mind. Mind is the purpose of it all. Whoever is the owner of this mind, 
or the creator of this mind or the requirer of this mind is obviously beyond but it's not separate from mind just like your breath cannot be separate from you you feel it leaving but you cannot see it leaving it is there all the time one breath goes out there's breath coming in there's no not even a overlap it's going in and out at the same time so mind and it's <clears throat> gigantic scale cannot be separate from the one who is this mind this pure mind the only thing that we have created to have discussions like this to recognize that there's a need to understand things is we have in the ident we have invented ourselves an identity which is an ego which is a peace of mind but it's still not disconnected from pure mind so on the surface we are living as ego we are ego that is what you are seeing in front of you ego while you think you are a person a body and while you think you are separate from consciousness and pure mind and we are sitting we are in individual boxes the mountain is different is different from you while you think all these things only ego is present and it's a value of mind <clears throat> so it's not you having mind having thoughts you are one big thought consciousness and mind are a thought where did consciousness and mind think this were they thought by something else or did they think it themselves themselves you see sounding too even you cannot describe what it is using this language consciousness and mind having a thought that it is consciousness and mind and you are a thought all this is thoughts mind is thoughts <clears throat> a moving invisible negative energy that cannot be imagine discover or whatever is happening right now and we are the result of this moving invisible energy that we see ourselves as something but this is the magnificence of consciousness and pure mind to create something like this so that it can imagine itself as this wow is this consciousness and mind the owner of one source one god how many minds will this god have how many thoughts can this one have how much expansion can consciousness and mind have infinite it's limitless think about it but don't think it's a you that's thinking about it don't think I the person I'm thinking about it let mind think on its own whatever thoughts come and you do not attach them or relate them to you the person or your life or anything that involves you these thoughts may be quite relevant in your life but when I say your life you think the body life in the life of consciousness and mind mind speaking to itself confirming things that it is that it is not that it could be consciousness and mind is like the school child going out to school wanting to learn every single thing it wants to learn everything about itself not about the mountains a separate entity it is the same thing it is the mountain that it is 
but it wants to see itself as a mountain. That is why seeing is all that is necessary for consciousness and mind to see itself as forms, as objects, as space, as planets, as experiences, as senses. And you think it's for you. But it is for you because you are consciousness and mind. But when you think it's selfishly for you, it's all about me. You will not experience fully what is possible for you to see. And when you see it without ego, it is spectacular. It is amazing what you are, not a person, not a individual, not having to live by society's rules and the Bible's rules, seeing it that whatever happened came from ego. Everything that involves you as a person and another person and a person's book or a person's biography or a person's film or a person's game or a person is ego. But don't feel aggrieved about ego because it is still part of mind. Surface mind, I call it. Pure mind is deep mind. Deep mind is creating so much things every single moment. But we cannot see it because we are looking from the ego mind. We are looking away from it rather than into it. I need a job, ego mind. And in today's society, without ego, we're doomed to survive. So it's not a this or that exercise. It's just an opportunity to see where you came from and where you're looking from and who you are as this looker. What is beyond consciousness and mind? Can you see this? Can you see where pure mind came from? Can you see where consciousness came from? Same thing. Didn't come from a different place. Or did it come? Has it not always been here? Beyond consciousness is reality. Reality is something that is real and stable. Consciousness is the breath of reality. Reality is using consciousness and mind, same thing. To find itself because without it it does not know it's real just like we do not know that we are illusion that we are unreal the body and all this moving temporary stuff we do not we don't know we're real until we actually realize where reality is and then we find out that we are real because we have cannot be separate from this thing that lies beyond consciousness. Because without the breath of consciousness, this thing does not exist. This reality also goes. So reality is infinite. But you have to lose your identity, your imagined self, to see it. And then your imagined self returns. But it's real. Very complex words. But hey, when your movement and consciousness, your enlightenment comes, which it may in this body, it may have been in a previous body, you will know. You will have known because 
if it's happened before, none of this is relevant to you. It's like, you know, it's like watching a soap, but you've got no interest whatsoever. It's like been it, seen it, done it. But I don't know because it's past. And the ones in the future, it will happen. And you'll see death is a hoax. Life is a hoax. Society, hoax. Ego, hoax. All hoax thoughts. To keep us from being. To keep us in this fear of we may be extinct. If we hang on to this ego, we can control what we are. And therefore, we can go on and on as humans. The only thing that's going on and on is the ego mind. You are infinitely always here. But until you drop the fear of death, drop the fear of being exposed as imagined, you'll continue to hide from your truth. You will continue to f to re reject the many movements in consciousness and mind that is leading you to enlightenment, but you hang on. Like the, the sailor on the ship and the big wave comes, hang on, hang on, hang on. I don't want to go. I don't want this ship to be taken away and I, I die. So you hang on and the experience passes. And that wave was bliss. The wave was enlightenment. It was real. It was a journey. The, the, the sailor on the ship is not a good example because it is actually physical form. We are thinking thoughts. A thought comes. It feels rather unstable. It's kind of like, oh, I feel like I'm losing myself. Oh, hang on. I don't want to lose myself. I don't want to lose my, 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 everything I've got is here. So therefore the enlightened experience of possibility passes but it's not a great event because it's many events leading up to the great event and when the many events are rejected when the big event comes it's phenomenal it is really a scary thing to face up to but when you face up to it wow the earth moves the whole galaxies move and you are exploded and you rise from the ground giggling like wow why have i been avoiding this but anyway time to go namaste